Hey there, this is Hardline Destructoids Video Game News Podcast. I'm Jordan DeVore, and today I've got Conrad Zimmerman with me. Hello again. And Steven Hansen is back again. Hello, everybody. Dale and Hamza are out this week, so we'll, we'll miss them, but we're going we're gonna to move on. There's very little news, but we're committed to this project, which we've only done one episode of. Uh, two. So, two, well, if you episode count the pilot. zero. <laughs> the funny thing is, is I actually think <laughs> that pilot was the better of the two episodes. Yeah, no, I think so, too. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, the big thing this week, I, I thought, was uh, Gaikai is rumored, uh, according to Eurogamer, rumored to be coming to... PlayStation 4 in Q3 2014 in North America and 2015 in Europe. And that was... Conrad, do your little thing again. This is our right. second oh, attempt oh, at oh, this. Do, do, do the thing again where... Yeah. yeah do the thing where... We kind of interrupted no. you. Well, it's kind of interesting to me that they're they're rolling it out here first in the United States and saying, oh, you know, we want to make sure the infrastructure's sound and, and so forth, and then we're going to go to Europe when Europe's the place with the better internet infrastructure. But, you know, at the same time, if they want to go lowest common denominator and say, okay, this, is, this shit's absolutely going to work on anything, <laughs> anywhere, get us two tin cans and a piece of string, we'll stream a game on it, this is the place to test that. Yeah. Yeah, uh, I, think, I think you're right. I feel like the fact that it's not even going to start until third quarter of next year and, and later in Europe mean, like, I hope that's a good indication that they're really trying to bang everything out properly instead of just dropping some half-assed solution on us. That's, okay, so they had, they did also, in addition to the speculation and rumors, they had quotes from uh, Sony Computer Entertainment CEO Andrew House, and that's exactly what he was saying, is that uh, we really want to nail the tech on our first go, and I hope they can. I'm still kind of s- skeptical. It'd be a nice change of pace for Sony. Exactly. <laughs> well, it'd be a nice change of pace for any cloud streaming of games, I think. Oh, sure, yeah. No, I just meant Sony as a company. To get something right on the first attempt <laughs> would be really impressive. Uh, and then and, and why not? I mean, the, the thing is, I'm not in a rush for... Um, for streaming games right now. There's lots of regular non-streaming games and I still can store things on my hard drive and and do all of that. So it's not it's not a rush scenario. Take your time, get it right because mm-hmm. when I do go ahead and get access to it, I want it to fucking work. That's what all was, what was the competitor to Gaikai? Do you, what was that that company? OnLive? OnLive. I've tried Ooh. OnLive and that's that's what happened is I tried it once early on. It was terrible, and I vowed to never do it again. And I don't we, want that to happen. We here. threw out, and when we cleared out the uh, the, sh- the set for the Destructo show, we threw out like four on live consoles. Only later oh, to yeah. realize that they have totally workable PC controllers in the boxes <laughs> as well. <laughs> I remember when they one of the packs they were giving those out, and people just swarmed the booth. Mm-hmm. Uh, crazy times. Well, the, I mean, the big thing about this, you're right, I, so I don't own a PS4, and I probably won't anytime soon, but the thing people want out of this is that backwards compatibility, and there was a pretty big discussion in the comments of this story about the importance of that, and I, I mean, there was that infamous quote from Don Matrick, uh, uh, formerly of Microsoft, where he said something like, 5% of consumers use it, which I don't know if that's true, but... Yeah, I mean, it, it matters to me, and I would assume it matters to you guys as well. But not so much? Well, uh, okay. Um, it, yes, it matters to me because I want those games to live on and continue to be available and accessible. But I think now as we see digital distribution marketplaces up and running and so forth, uh, even niche titles are starting to make their way onto them. I'm not saying we're going to have a full comprehensive library of games going forward, but I don't think it's that big a concern. It's not the concern it used to be. The people who are hardcore into this stuff Mm -hmm. and and collecting, they're going to have original hardware and, and software to run it on. And as long as the hardware still runs, it's going to be okay. Yeah, that's the thing. I can't trust Nintendo to put Super Mario World on my 3DS, <laughs> so I have to just keep the, the Super <laughs> Nintendo out. That, I mean, that's I, I, I agree with you, and that's kind of... I, I had a quick little point in my post saying that, yeah, it'll matter to us hardcore people, but generally speaking, I don't know that that many people actually use it. I mean, it's one of those features that's really nice to have, 
But it again, will be a convenience thing that I will love yeah. having, but it's not it's not a deal breaker. No, I don't think in it the is the way either. that it even would have been a couple of generations ago. I think uh, it's, it's 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 a, it's a convenience thing. Like I remember once wanting to play Twisted Metal 2 on my PS3. So I put it in the PS3 and I played it with uh, my cousin who was over for the holidays. And he was like, "Yeah, that's Twisted Metal 2." And we're like, "Okay, good." <laughs> you know, it's, it's not a thing you're going to, you know, maybe use all the time, but it's nice to be able to to go back, pick up titles mm-hmm. you missed or, or whatever. I think There's usually that one or two games, I think. Oh, it's it's great that my PS3 plays PlayStation 1 games. Without any hassle. That's cool, because I don't want to necessarily have to drag my PS1 out and do that. But I would do that if I wanted to play a PS1 game. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, I, mean, I still keep the PS2 on hand, too, which also plays PS1 games, so it's like... You know. <laughs> yeah. It would be nice if eventually, assuming all these Microsoft, Sony, and Nintendo are still around in you know 20 years from now, uh, if we just get everything digital... Sort of like a Steam library. No more concerns about that. That'd be good. I don't know that it'll ever happen, but... Well, maybe unofficially we can get that going with emulation and ROMs and so forth, but... I think I, that most of that stuff's out there. Like, there are people cataloging this and mm-hmm. maintaining digital archives of it, and, and that exists uh, as long as there's emulation software to run it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that stuff will be out there. So, you know, and and is that a piracy thing? Like, is that, you know, something you're concerned about? Who is making a sale off of a game that nobody's sold in five, ten years, you know? Uh, So that covers the stuff that maybe never winds up on the actual marketplaces. Mm -hmm. Well, that's kind of where I've always drawn the line is how old the software is, and especially if I already own a hard copy of it, I don't really feel... And do I have any options to buy it otherwise? Mm-hmm. I mean, I want to play mm-hmm. the, the Blade Runner uh, adventure game, but wh- where am I supposed to buy that? Yeah. I just I just want to do whatever is easiest for me to get the thing. This goes for games, music, anything. And if that means paying, so be it. Yeah. Well, and that's... It didn't used to be that way. Exactly. It's just now starting to get to the point where paying for it is the easier way to get stuff. (laughs) Uh, Another another story that... So I haven't been really following this at all. The follow-up for Countdown teaser website. Have you guys seen this at all? I saw your post about it. I haven't seen it. I didn't even see that. It wasn't my post. Josh DeRocher did it. Or Josh DeRocher's post. Yeah, yeah. Um... I just wanted to bring this up because Fallout. <laughs> and I desperately want more Fallout. Oh uh, God, I opened it and it's got Morse code. Yeah, it it's pretty. That's why intense. I didn't look at it. It's pretty intense. Yeah, yeah. I I would love another Fallout. Um, the time uh, is there, right. Yes. Yeah. Um. I. I would. But the thing is, is that I did still haven't finished New Vegas. Like not even close. But will you ever finish New Vegas? <laughs> Probably not. But it makes me wonder if I'll give ever, you know, I don't know. Maybe I'll, I'll, I'll probably still be into it though, because I, I still spent sixty hours playing New Vegas. I think. So it stands as, to reason that I enjoyed myself. As someone I, who did not particularly like Fallout Three, is New Vegas worth playing? Because. Mm-hmm. Do you like me, Fallout outside of Fallout 3? I haven't played Fallout outside of Fallout so 3. So what, what did you like about Fallout 3 is the question, I think. <sighs> or what didn't you like? I, well, I didn't like how uh, how everything looked. It just really started bumming <laughs> me out. It's just... No, you will not like it. <laughs> I mean, it's Fallout, a post-apocalyptic. Fallout, like, you, you, can make, you can make post-apocalyptia look... Cool and nice, like but Fallout. I don't think ever will. Just, no, if we, yeah, because the scale of it. It's a dirty, dirty game. It's a filthy wasteland. Uh, yeah, I. It's not meant to be pleasant. Yeah, I don't. I don't know what it was. Like I, I gave it like over ten hours of you know playing it, and eventually I was just like, I'm not, I'm not enjoying this anymore. <laughs> Ah, that's too bad. We recently did that a favorite multi-platform games of the generation or whatever list, and that was Fallout Three was mine. So, 
So you're bumming me out, man. But uh, so uh, which is better, New Vegas or three? I I personally liked three more because it, it came at the right time for me. Whereas New Vegas, when that was out, I think it's the better game, definitely, especially for story. But when New Vegas was out, I had already played so much Fallout 3 that it wasn't that new. Right. And so kind of lost some of the magic. But well, that was the big thing. The people recommending New Vegas to me were people who were like, yeah, it has a, a better story, better world mm-hmm. sort of deal. It does. I mean, there are the characters are more interesting in Vegas, I think. Uh, your objective is more clear, I think. In a lot of ways, like the whole like I'm gonna wander the wasteland looking for my father. That's not a whole lot of direction. Uh, not really. You know, uh, I'm going to hunt down the guy who tried to bury me alive, and I think he went this way. That's a direction. <laughs> well, even after you find your father, the story kind of just tinkers out from there in three. Yeah. What, what was it? Wasn't it? They wanted clean water, or what? I don't even remember, honestly. I just remember the ending where you go into that chamber where yeah. you send your companion into the chamber. Yeah, and then they someone dies. clean water. They were trying to save the wasteland with clean water. And, and it was not... Uh, it, that that particular plot didn't feel very much like Fallout in a, lot, in, in a number of ways, and mm-hmm. that was unfortunate because um, I was a big fan of the first two games. And New Vegas feels more like traditional Fallout, but it's not cheery or anything. Um, it's and, and it's not a particularly diverse environmental design, uh, if, if that's the sort of thing that matters to mm-hmm. you. So. Yeah. I don't so. even... It's hard to put into words what I liked, I guess, about Fallout 3. I... Because it is a, the game is ugly as sin, I have to say. It's yes, it's very ugly, and, and yet <laughs> I uh, had to explore everything. Yeah, it had a lot of really great nooks and crannies, and the thing is, it's like every time you wander into some new area, you can't tell whether or not there's some little subplot operating until you fully explored it. You know, whether it's going to be a little story that's just sort of native to that one building um, in Fallout. Like, there's this whole Lovecraftian horror thing in one of the buildings, like, down to the southwest, and it's creepy as hell, and it's totally independent from anything else that's going on. Or you can wander into another area and, like, just find this branched-out thing. So there's just... It felt like there was a surprise everywhere in in Fallout 3. And by New Vegas, you sort of knew to expect that, uh, which maybe diminished some of the magic. Oh, Conrad, how much of the DLC did you play for either game? I don't. I I only touched the DLC in three, and it wasn't that great. I played, I think, all of the DLC for Fallout Three, and uh, I bought all of the DLC for Fallout New Vegas. Um, I had. I think I wandered <laughs> into one one of the DLCs there, just because I knew I was getting close to the end of the game, and it was time to do that. But um, yeah, it's. It was not great, but it, it added something every time that was interesting. Even if it wasn't the plot content or the, the new narrative, it added a feature that was interesting to explore. Um, and I loved the the big house that you could get, like the, the mothership. Uh, I oh think my gosh, I completely forgot about that. What was it, it Mothership Zeta? Yeah, yeah, and you know, and all of that wow. like super sci-fi stuff. That was pretty cool. Um, it, although killing the aliens got a little tedious. It did. It did. I, this is all. I, I I have such a terrible memory. What was the other one? Operation Anchorage. Yeah, yeah. yeah that one was less good, mm-hmm. but it was totally linear and it wasn't that long. So. So and you got your color. Your you got away from the wasteland a little bit in that. Uh, yeah, a little bit. A little bit. Where would you want the next fault to be set? Do you have anything in mind in any cities? Mm, well, I mean, they've done pretty much the, the, the western United States to death. W- wasn't there talk of Tokyo once, and then people were like, that's offensive? <laughs> and then they said, never mind, we didn't say anything. <laughs> mm. Because, honestly, that could be kind of cool. Some kind of super compact city like that with high population. 
Yeah, uh, Bill Zucker suggests Chicago, mm. uh, which which would be good. Um, yeah, I, th- I think you're right. I think you could even uh, go uh, all the way up to Detroit in the region. I think something with huge. good good density where it can be huge, but you can have more smaller interactions in like buildings and things rather than you know vast vast open stretches. Mm-hmm. I mean, I care less about the specific landmarks uh, that we got a lot of in the Capital Wasteland and more about just what's... It, like, it could be made up and fictional, and that would be interesting as well. I don't... It doesn't need to be, you know, like, they bombed Egypt. Oh, there's the Sphinx or something like that, so... Yeah, as long as you have some sort of landmarks which help sort of ground mm-hmm. you and, and get your bearings in, in the virtual world and work your way around things. Yeah, I would go global with it. It's the sort of thing that I would I would keep... American. Uh, the fiction. It, how does the lore? Does it expand much beyond the U.S.? As far I'm as I'm, as far as I mean, there's just uh, there's almost no mention of it, as far as I know. Okay, I mean, that's what I thought. There's probably something somewhere with uh, you know like a little bit of information. Uh, you know, China is you know features heavily in the narrative, but mm-hmm. um, I mean, just, just thematically, isn't it kind of a an ironic Americana yeah. to it? Exactly, and it's it, it's that's the sort of thing that I would want to I would want to keep there. I don't. It's not that I don't care how the wasteland affected other other places, but like you could take Metro. You know, if you want your Russian Eastern wasteland, European wasteland, you've got Metro, and that's that's awesome. Do that. Um, I think a, a good uh, one of the things I saw in a comment somewhere was Boston being a possibility. Uh, that would not be bad. That would not be bad. I'd also be interested to see a um, like a uh, New Orleans. Ooh, that would yeah. be interesting. You get get some swap stuff in there. Should uh, really vary things up. Uh, the problem is, is that the vaults more or less are in places where uh, there was you know like value. <laughs> like, I'm, I'm, you know, I mean, like there's a there's a population with money and wealth that could buy into the vaults and, and things like. like just, well, aren't there nothing... some 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 southern debutantes still? Some like old money in New Orleans? Is there? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I, I, it was my expectation that anybody who had enough money to leave left. That's what I thought would happen by now. Is that not right? Mm-hmm. I mean. I <laughs> probably, no, probably they've probably left, but I'm I don't know, I'm sure there's like ancestral mansions that they want to return to someday, maybe. 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 Bill is saying that if this uh, teaser site, the alternate reality game, is legit, then the signs are pointing to Boston, maybe Connecticut or Rhode Island, so the Commonwealth area. Now, yeah, there you go. That would be good. I, I at this point I'd honestly take just about anything. As long as it's not as... It can't possibly be as janky looking as these past fallouts. <laughs> <laughs> they have to have moved on to a, at least newer engine. Uh, moved off Gamebryo, right? Uh, like, Skyrim looked good, technically, as much as I don't really care for Skyrim, but... I guess that was pretty... That could be janky, too. So, that's kind of their thing, Bethesda. <laughs> That's you need, a, like, like Arcane's Dishonored art design in a giant open world, and I'll play it. Well, when they bought id, there was all that talk about... I don't even remember what the engine is. id Tech 5? Rage engine. Ra- the Rage engine, the one with the mega textures. And then they, I, I hate that they were quickly... They were so quick to shut down that that would not be used for Fallout, unless that's changed. That, that but... game was a, a pretty wasteland. That yeah, yeah. Was- Gorgeous. Boring, but gorgeous. <laughs> like, you walk into the first main town, and there's these people gambling on, like, virtual Rock'em Sock'em robots, and it looked so good. And I was like, I want to play virtual Rock'em Sock'em robots all day with these degenerates. Stan, I never played a Rage, so I just have your descriptions in those I, screenshots I play, I played to played the, the first three hours oh, okay. at a preview event. <laughs> And then I read all the reviews, and they're like, yeah, after the first three hours, it starts to really suck. And I was like, okay. And that day, Phil. It was, well, the, it was the car. The vehicle combat thing did not... I don't know how much of that the game was, but that did not sound appealing to me. 
in the slightest. Yeah, Vehicle Combat has not... I never really cared for well, it. I mean, I, I love Twisted Metal, but it seems vehicular combat has had a uh, a fall from grace since those did days. You, did you like the new Twisted Metal? I didn't even play it. Okay, so there you go. Like, I, I don't even know how relevant that genre is anymore. Not very, maybe. Well, there's that, uh, that one racing game that is like a, a realistic looking racing game, but it's like Mario Kart with all the like, you can like cause earthquakes and, and mess with people and stuff. I don't remember which one that is, like Grid or... It's not Grid. I know what you're talking about. I, I always mix up the name. They have all these racing games with a few letter long names <laughs> that I confuse, but... Drive Club, Driver, Drive Atar. Driver San Francisco is a game I really want to play. Is that the one where you are in a coma and you can magically yeah. teleport to different people? It's so awesome. It's like every time I was playing Driver 2 and you had to chase someone down to get a new car, just forget that, just go straight to the car and do driver things. It's awesome. Uh, let's see here. So this is not really a surprise at all, but Microsoft came out with some of the developers that are involved with their ID at Xbox program for Xbox One. And, I mean, going down the list, it's Flambeer, uh, Crytek. That is the one surprise, it's Crytek. <laughs> and is, they, it the, is it the name of an indie game studio that you can recognize immediately? They're probably, probably in this list. in there. And some others that I didn't, I wasn't familiar with. But they did clarify this isn't just indie developers, it's self-publishing, so that's how the studio behind the critically acclaimed Rise, Son of Rome, made it in there. <laughs> oh, man. Well, that was always the fear with, with Microsoft going forward is, is, you know, they didn't have even have any sort of self-publishing thing for indies, and now they're showing off self-publishing, and you're listing Crytek. I mean... It just goes to show how much of a <laughs> demand there was for it if Crytek is on board. <laughs> You got Cap Cappy in there. That's I mean they already have a game announced, but uh, what else? Half uh, Half Brick, Ninja B, Double Fine, Team Seventeen, Drinkbox. Yeah, I mean it's it's just and Nicholas. It's a lot of studios. I am excited to see what they're gonna do next. I would imagine most of these are uh, who are signed on are doing games that are coming to other platforms, and so not doing exclusives. But either way, I mean the system could clearly use more games. So why not? Why not these? Yeah, why not? I mean, it, who cares? There's going to be more... It just means more games. It's great that they're going to be able to self-publish. It, it, it's going to open up the opportunity for the games to just be on the platform and less of uh, a barrier to, to having products uh, in place is, is a benefit. And mm -hmm. I think everybody wins. It's not... It, there's no benefit in making your platform exclusive. I, I totally agree. I think we've... I mean, we're still going to get those, obviously, with first-party games and even... No, no, no. Now, there's a difference. And there's You can make your games exclusive to your platform, but don't right. make your platform exclusive. Right. That's, that's the that difference. That is true, too. Your yeah. platform should be accessible as possible to offer product. That's mm -hmm. its purpose. Well, it's like these guys are already making games that they want to sell, that they're not trying to be exclusive to one thing. Just let them sell it, is the well, that's point. What, that's what I was it's saying. Like, it's the yeah, equivalent yeah. of, like, let us give you money. Let them give mm -hmm. you games to put on your platform. Like, don't make it harder than it needs to be. I, we've. That's what I was going to say, is we've kind of moved away, uh, in a lot of cases, from exclusives. It's just financially, the, the platforms are similar enough that there's almost no reason not to if you can afford it. Unless you want to harness the power of the Kinect. No, I don't think anyone wants to do that. <laughs> except for Rare. I, I, I still don't know. They keep having these quotes where they're like, we are totally aware that people want our old IP back, but we like Kinect. And I... <laughs> okay, guys. Do they really I, like Kinect? Sure. I don't know. I, sure. I can almost not believe that. As a lover of controllers and input methods. I want Connect to be useful for fucking anything. Anything at all. Just give me something. Anything. But, but there are no experiences being made for it uh, that really seem to suggest that there's a point to having it in games. And that's disappointing to me. Now, my hope with 
the uh, Kinect camera being in every Xbox is that maybe developers will play with it more. You know? That would be... So here's the thing I don't get is now that it is there and the install base will be there for the device, is why are more developers not using the gamepad first and foremost and then having Kinect as the secondary controls? I, I like Because it doesn't I, work still. I mean, Dale is just complaining about this. Like, three-fourths of the thing he says, rec- or less than three-fourths, recognize, but when it doesn't recognize, it, it's immediately useless, and you never want to use it. And yet the Kinect 2 can scan and see a cat and put a gamer tag to it. I've seen pictures of that on the internet, so it must be true. <laughs> uh, yeah, I... Uh, you can even see your crotch bulge in your jeans. But it cannot see your penis. No, <laughs> just the bulge. They, they came out and said, you can't see your, your junk. I love that they made... They, they, like, and then like a month and a half later, did they come out and say, just for, you know, clarity... It can't see your actual genitals. It just saw an outline. Like, okay, guys. <laughs> Thanks. I, I I can't say that I'm particularly hopeful for the Connect, but no, I'm not hopeful for it. But I want it to get its fair shake, and I do too. So that way, if nothing else, they can move on when it if it doesn't work. Yeah, yeah. We could just say we could qualitatively say, all right. This doesn't work. Let's not do it again. Let's never speak of it again. Right, and we'll move on, and it'll be wonderful. And then maybe, you know, maybe someone will come along and make... Maybe there will be five amazing games that are made amazing because they involve Kinect. And to some degree, that will justify its existence. <clears throat> and then we can all move on with our lives. I really Five don't. games would be enough. Yeah. I think. I, I mean, no, you already have as... Dance Central, so you just need four more. <laughs> they can't be sequels to Dance Central. <laughs> I four more like, Dance Central games. I liked Child of Eden. I, I did too, but you could. I don't think it was mandatory that you play with Connect. No, there was a controller, but it played differently with Connect. It did. It, it was. Did. It wasn't like it wasn't even the same exact gameplay, and I I liked playing it. I also liked Once Upon a Monster. God damn it. That was cute. That Sesame Street game is awesome. Honestly, and I, I honestly uh, kind of like the Fitness Evolved games for 360, even though they didn't work. They, to be honest, they did not work that well. Uh, no. They probably work better on uh, Xbox One, but... Or in a but, gym. Again, these aren't... But these aren't really traditional types of games like that we well, would normally Gun, play. Gun Stringer looked good. I didn't play it. I Okay, so I did play that. They When I got my Kinect, it was... I don't remember the exact price, but it was super cheap, and it came with Gunstringer in it, and that it was okay. I don't even know that I finished it though. It was just okay. Yeah. I, I mean, you you had your hand up like it was a little pop cap gun. That was cool. And I think the the weirdest thing about that uh, that ID Xbox whatever the announcement is is <coughs> they were like, okay, we're finally not going to force you to be exclusive to our platform, but we still yeah. have platform parity. If we can manage it. They said they'd still work with developers on a case-by-case basis. Yeah, but it's Microsoft, so... Who knows what that will mean. Well, it just means they don't want to be second out of the gate. That's all it means. Right, I get that much. If you're going to put out on PS4 as well as us, we'd like to come out at the same time. And and that doesn't... Well, when I think of parity, I I think of more of just the... uh, Just, you know... Uh, from a, a technical and, and feature standpoint, because before they yeah. seemed to used to have this obsession with we need uh, exclusive features for XBLA. Oh, I don't see that happening anymore. I don't I think, think so either. They, it seems like dumb. they aren't even acknowledging. It, it seems like they moved away from XBLA. Mm-hmm. So that's I guess that's a, that's a good thing. I guess. I, don't know. I liked XBLA. It was. I did too. <laughs> Uh, it was, uh, I mean, as a consumer, I liked XBLA, and, you mm-hmm. know, there are developers who thought it was wonderful, and then there were others who had less in, an enjoyable experience in in dealing with the, the live arcade system, but um, it was fine for what it was, but I think we need to move past the yeah. idea of mm-hmm. separating some games, oh, these are just arcade games, these are lesser games, and then these are arcade games, so just make them games, and just give us a fucking store. And, and make it simple for publishers and developers mm-hmm. to put the content in the store 
and we'll take care of the rest. We'll buy. We're, we're good at that. Uh, yeah. I mean, just look at... Even as much as the Xbox Live Indie Game service was not what a lot of people wanted and probably not what Microsoft wanted, some of those games uh, that were buried in there sold so ridiculously well. I made a game with zombies in it. There you go. All of those Minecraft-type games, uh, Castle Miners of the Year, whatever it was. There's something like Kitten Cannon, except you uh, eject a baby out of a Baby woman. maker. Yeah. That, is, that is a classic. Yeah. So as long as we can get to the games, uh, let us do it, let us buy it, and I think they'll be okay. I have to say, though, I, I can't remember who I was talking about this with, but, man, if they had supported XPLA on Xbox One out of the gate, even with, say, just the best games or a portion of the library, I would have been really strongly tempted to get that system just because I own that many XPLA games. Yeah, it is it is pretty unfortunate because I think I, I I almost certainly own more XBLA titles mm-hmm. by a wide margin than I do actual Xbox 360 games, which is terrifying to think about all the boxes in my living room of Xbox 360 games, <laughs> which there are a ton. There are. There's like half a dozen boxes of 360 games. That's disgusting. Hmm. And I mean that's not to just. Uh, fault Microsoft there. Sony, the same thing goes for Sony, even though I, I don't own as many PSN titles, but actually, come to think of it, a number of those are playable on PS4. We got uh, That Game Company stuff, Journey, Flow, Flower, those are all sound compatible. Shapes. Sound shapes. It just brought Escape Plan over from the Vita, which I'm really curious to how it works without all the Vita controls. I mean, well... That functionality is in the DualShock 4, isn't it? Well, they have, like, back and rear touch stuff, which you mm. can't in DualShock 4. So I don't know if they changed it to traditional controls or what. But they've done a good job of having... They've a, done a better a, job. A, 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 yeah, a better job of having... Even just having a, a sort of a steadier cycle of releases since the console came out. Uh, Tiny Brains came out this week, which, you know, Chris gave an 8 out of 10. It seems like a fun couch co-op thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, Super Mother Load came out, like, the week after release. Like they've still been, you know, putting things out to play. Mm-hmm. Uh, we've got our chat going here. I was gonna. That's basically what we have for news this week. Uh, did you guys get anything in Black Friday or Cyber Monday? I I don't really think I did. I got Rayman Legends. I think that was it. Wasn't I, I bought nothing. Nothing. You yeah. you're the winner. Yep. Yeah, I, I might have bought... I think I bought a game in the Steam sale, but I can't even remember what it was now. <laughs> Which so, is sadly a relatable experience I think we can we can all appreciate. Yeah. Is buying something on Steam and either never playing it or not even remembering the name. Oh, it's only a buck fifty. Why not? <laughs> At least, did you do it for the trading cards? Did it have no, trading cards? Okay. No, it didn't have cards. It didn't have cards. <laughs> Are you are you still are you still on the trading? No, card I card? that's a, I get all these people like, oh, are you still addicted? You must be, and, and really, I'm not. I wrote that article for Destructoid when it was kind of the hot new thing, and then immediately after posting that, I got it stopped caring. So, <laughs> yeah. yeah, I uh, I have a uh, like I have my groups of <clears throat> Steam programs, and the games that I wouldn't accidentally play but have cards, I have them in a category. And thinking to myself, at some point, I would play them specifically for the purpose of getting the cards. But they've sat there for months. I, I, I've no, I've got a couple of sets. I, could, I occasionally get a booster pack, and I open that up, and I think, oh, that's neat. And then move on with my life. I, yeah, I, I, w- I, I will open if I get one. I don't care even a little. Like, if I could opt out <laughs> of Steam trading cards, I would gladly opt out. I don't even want them to pop up in my notifications. As stupid as they are, uh, so I don't know what the marketplace is like now, but when when it was being rolled out, I got some free games out of it, so I can't really complain. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't... uh, The thing thing about the cards was that I never spent any money to get them. Yes. And in having them, I got other content that I wanted (laughs) for no cost. So, neat. And for the people who are into it and dig that collection stuff and like 
filling out checklists and, and so forth. That's awesome, and it's just another great way to invest people. And if I can exploit in any way their desire to fill their checklists uh, in exchange for uh, virtual currency, that's the thing I love about the whole trading card system and the Steam Marketplace in general is that it's just like a money goes in, money doesn't come out kind of thing. You know, it doesn't. It baffles me. <laughs> it's it's absolutely astounding because I see what like trading cards go for. And I, you know, you have to figure that at some point, currency had to come into the system. Like there was actual money in a Steam wallet somewhere. Mm -hmm. That you know, and then that money started to trickle out into other places. And you know, a little bit of it gets siphoned out to the developers, and a little bit gets siphoned out to Steam, and the rest of it just sort of circulates around this slow drain as other people get their cut of this fake money that was once real money, but those people are getting real money out of it. They're draining the real money out of the virtual economy. And meanwhile, people are still putting real money in, but everyone else in the system is just trading around their virtual money. Mm -hmm. well, I, I love that. That's, that's true. Yeah, I think the real winner is Valve and the developers. Mm -hmm. I, I can only imagine how much money they're getting. The developers, even though they get a small cut, I'm sure it's a ton of money. Oh, yeah, because, I mean, every single transaction, you know, it's ad pennies add up. Yeah. And there are millions and millions of people. Well, they also got, got people in the zeitgeist to buy their games for trading cards. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, everybody wins I, in I that I did scenario. it. <laughs> I'll admit I did it. <laughs> like that, that was the extra that, push I needed. On top of that, that any game that was bought on the, you know, where trading cards was considered a, a benefit to the purchase was inexpensive. And the consumer benefits there too because they're buying an affordable game. Like, there is nobody who loses in this situation, as far as I can tell. There, exactly. I mean, what was it? McPixel was a dollar, I think. There were games where you would pay for the game itself through its cards because it was so low-priced during the sale. Yeah. Just madness. Someone in chat uh, mentioned it's like Bitcoins. I, that it makes about as much sense to me as Bitcoins, which is to say it doesn't make any sense to me at all. I don't get Bitcoins. It's very strange. It's like bitcoins in that I wish I had the. Uh, the you wish you had a ton of them. <laughs> <laughs> I, I wish I had the 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 strength to have, like, profited greatly off of it, and. I, I keep seeing these headlines now where it's like guy found or guy lost X amount of bitcoins worth literally hundreds of thousands of dollars, and I'm just like, H how? Okay. <laughs> I'd, for this currency that I don't even who even takes bitcoins well it's like the equivalent of, of you know you know wishing you picked up Apple stock for a mm -hmm. dollar fifty a share the guys who like oh yeah I got a bitcoin three years ago now it's worth a million dollars and you're like why did I get a bitcoin three years ago and forget <laughs> a about it a single bitcoin yeah uh, and the last thing uh, we were probably going to talk about is we so we did uh, best and worst new characters of 2013 on Detroit and we got we were getting a kick out of the worst. So one of the top comments was the aliens in Aliens Colonial Marines for worst <laughs> new character. I agree. Yeah, no, they they walk around like they have There's shot that, pants. That's that gif like of their the arms blind up like one. Like T-Rex. Yeah. <laughs> I love the with the with the you you what mate just the yeah that's great. The uh, my favorite though was the uh, old Dante repeatedly punching new Dante in the face it's, and it's perfectly seamless too. Uh, that's a good one. Who so Stephen? Who is your favorite or who were you, some of your favorites uh, this year? Uh, uh Drippy, Mr. Drippy from Nino Kuni. He was for was me too. Me too. Really fabulous. He's such a, a cool guy. Uh, rare, rare, what, Welsh accent in a game? That was cool. It was just novel. But, <laughs> yeah, he's a he's a cute little dude. This little uh, lampshade hanging off his nose. That was a, a good game that everyone's going to forget came out this year because it came out January 30th. It does feel like an eternity ago that I played that. Yeah. I think, for me, some of my favorites were uh, the twins in Bioshock Infinite. They were pretty good. The Lutest twins, yeah, yep. that's who I was going to say. That's probably who I would say. They're my I favorites. Mean, 
Uh, oh yeah, someone in the worst mentioned that kid in Metal Gear Rising, and George? he's George. He's George definitely is terrible. My, I was telling, so uh, I was borrowing Conrad's copy of the game because I hadn't played uh, Revengeance yet. And when I got to George, I nearly stopped playing. That's how much I hated his his voice acting. <laughs> so that was the that was the voice actor that almost pushed you over. It was. It was. I remember it's you like mentioned this, that. It's this kid who he doesn't. The voice actor does not sound like a kid. And I don't know how old he's supposed to be, but it is just the worst. <laughs> I don't even know what it is. It's it's cringeworthy. Yeah. In but, terms of in terms of favorite characters, uh, Luigi in Luigi's Mansion Dark Moon has such an endearing personality. You know, he, he cowers in fear. He hums along he hums, to the, the, to the is, background is music. Heartwarming. So he, that was, he was my favorite character for a while. Uh, the Messengers of Tearaway, even though, like, they're whatever you want, people have made them into, like, every single notable game character ever. But just the, the base characters are, are really cute. Mm-hmm. Um, I like uh, the protagonist of Kentucky Route Zero. Because he's basically you in like a more complete way than something like Commander Shepard will ever be. Let's talk about that game because I have not played it, and everyone says that's a mistake, me not playing it. But I kind of want to wait until all the episodes are out. Yeah, I mean, I haven't even played the second episode. Okay, <laughs> but it, it's so good. It's like this, this. Uh, Sort of, it reminds me of like, uh, there's a, a Faulkner short story, uh, what is it, A Rose for Emily? It's just this like weird, sort of uh, bluegrass feeling, moody mystery. Hmm. Um, but but what I was talking about as a character is like, in in the the choices you make in in text and dialogue, like it's so well written that you get a much better sense of, you know, who you are versus, like, games that are like, do you want to save the the council or save the civilians? Because, like, that doesn't fucking mean anything. Like, <laughs> you know, it doesn't matter. Like, but, yeah, the, the, the more pared-down sort of realistic feel of it, sort of, you know, what you choose to say really uh, uh, shapes the character and you really start thinking about, you know, why you made those those choices. We got chat asking if you're stoned, but they don't realize that's just how you are, Stephen. <laughs> <laughs> I was really taken aback uh, during oh, yeah, yeah. the cartridges run when all the YouTube comments were like, yeah, this guy's so stoned. Well, I'm like, no, like this is my, my baseline. This you don't want to see I... Stephen stoned. <laughs> <laughs> there was, and then there was that. Uh, they were not happy with you, the YouTube commenters about your PlayStation Four that you might sell because you didn't cancel your pre-order. Yeah, no, they were really upset, and I'm like, dude, uh, I I just paid seven hundred dollars in doctor bills yesterday. If I can make a hundred dollars flipping this PS4 that I don't need right now, I'm I'm gonna do it and not feel bad. If someone someone was like. You shouldn't make a profit. You should sell it to someone who needs it. And I'm like, no one needs a no PS4. One needs, I don't think Go there's away. that big of issue getting the stock right now. <laughs> like, like the, the, oh, yeah. You just know if that they just probably... someone who needs it. <laughs> <laughs> a child in need. Stupid. We need one of those sappy commercials. Somewhere, uh, there are children without PlayStation 4s. There's starving Ooh. children in Africa who don't have PS4s to eat. For pennies a day. <laughs> Mm. That's so sad. <laughs> Is so that's all, that's all we have for topics. But I I don't want to end yet because we actually have people watching this live for once. <laughs> you fools! <laughs> we got a there's, decent number in there. There's, yeah, there's, there's more characters to talk about, or we can we can talk about the chat I, people. Who I was I was hoping besides me being stoned. Yeah, I was hoping chat would throw some either topics or questions our way, but they've all been kind of self-contained and keeping themselves busy. <laughs> so it's like, we're not even needed. <laughs> the year of Luigi, it says Brett. That's the only thing oh, we're talking God. about. The voice actor died for Luigi. What? Uh, he wasn't no, He wasn't the voice actor. He oh, he was wasn't? The, no, he was the actor who portrayed Luigi in the DIC produced Super Mario Bros. Super Show mm. opposite Captain Lou Albano. Okay, that guy. Mario. Yeah, that guy. It's still sad, less... 
it's maybe a little less bad. <laughs> as much as I hate to say that, but... <laughs> Okay. Oh, well, his value as a human <laughs> being because he was the physical actor in the crappy TV show. Oh, that, it, me. that show was not I, good. <laughs> I, thought you said, I thought you meant John Leguizamo died. <laughs> See, that would have been tragic. Uh, I like John Leguizamo. I like them. Yeah. I like him, yeah. I, no, I'm not kidding. I, I do. That would be tragic. And I love Bob Hoskins. I don't want him to die either. He's great. Yeah, I keep thinking Bob Hoskins is dead. <laughs> Me too. I, oh, he's old. I, I watched uh, 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 Mona Lisa or something like this, like '70s English. Uh, he's like a like a, a tough guy working with some prostitute, and like he was old then. And it's like that was like 40 years ago. So when you said that you don't want him to die, I was about to correct you to say he had died, even though I didn't know for sure. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's how convinced I was. <laughs> oh man. Yes, we did. Uh, for people coming in late, we did talk about Fallout. We'll have. So we're doing this live right now. Um, we will have this on iTunes and YouTube uh, if you want the video after the fact. That'll be later this week. So. Yeah, we had we. Someone in chat was saying that we he didn't see any uh, information about Hardline on the front page. There was a post. It was there. I did it. I think unless it got taken down mysteriously. But the, we so we usually are going to be recording Wednesdays at eleven Pacific to noon. We're almost wrapping it up here. Spawn was okay. <laughs> I kind of like Spawn. <laughs> Yeah, Spawn was okay. The pest and and Zoker, the pest is awesome. <laughs> I was ready for you to see that. <laughs> yeah, the pest is awesome. If you don't like it, you just don't get it. It's it's that annoying. It's that kind of of just deep, frustrating, annoying. Is that which one is the pest again? Is that? That's the one where he's just this irritating dude, and he winds up in a most dangerous game scenario where he gets hunted for sport. Okay, I was thinking of something else then. Yeah, you're thinking of Moulin great. Rouge. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> That's all I remember about that movie is him being in it and like backstage, and Ewan McGregor doing something. Ewan McGregor did a lot of somethings in that movie. <laughs> Well, I think well, we should probably call it. I, barring any last-second suggestions here, oh, now we're just talking about movies he's been in, Land of the Dead. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he wasn't bad in Land of the Dead. I mean, Land of the Dead wasn't a great movie. It, no, I don't think but... so either. Well, I like when his when his uh, he runs up on Dennis Hopper in the garage. That was mm -hmm. fun. I don't even remember that part. I guess it's Dennis been Hopper's so long. dead. Oh, There's I know. Like, ah. Yeah. Paul Walker, a, too. A that was dude. sad. Ooh. Yeah, that's that's really disappointing I, because I, the Fast and the Furious movies have gotten really, like, legitimately good. I, I didn't realize how much I appreciate Paul Walker being alive because I, 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 I do quite like those that series. Even the bad ones, I, I like them. No, like, the bad ones, you can, you, can, you can watch Tokyo Drift and, like, get really drunk and... It's entertaining. Laugh at Bow Wow, but like the last two movies were, <laughs> were like really tightly scripted and, and just well done. Like they were good, you know, action movies. They were good, but they're All still right. they're still moving forward without them. They, of course, they are. I mean, they still got Vin Diesel. He better not die anytime. You soon. got Vin Diesel on the Rock having a, a, a sweat off. That's all you need. On that, was... that note, I think we should. <laughs> we always have to end this on some weird topic. I think their sweat, the rock being sweaty, is a good enough. Take a drink every time the rock is sweaty or he throws papers on the floor. You're gonna be constant. You're gonna need like this tube hooked up into your into your throat, constantly pouring beer. If that's the case, you're never gonna be not drinking. Um, so thank you so much for listening, guys. This has been Hardline. We'll be again. We'll be back next week, Wednesday at eleven. Check us out on iTunes, also on YouTube.com/detoid. We've got uh, the first episode up there. If you want to go back and check that out. Uh, thanks, and see you later.